Hello, this is Victor, and today I want to share my very negative experience with one of the rebuild companies out there that I mailed out my um, fuel distributor. This is fuel distributor right now, this assembled. Now the company was advertised on eBay. It, uh, it's called Rebuild Systems. The guy's name is Gene, and he lives in campground in North Carolina. So, it's stupid of me to do this in the first place. I should have done it myself, but because I thought that the guy has spe specific equipment um, to test the flow and I thought well you know he has this stuff he has the machine to check it out so I'd rather just him calibrate my unit as well but um, basically this is what happened again this is my experience I don't know if anybody else experienced this or I have positive experience I don't know but from what I can see the way the unit was done it is terrible just no way that you should do it with that guy based on my experience at least I can I can say that now first things first before mail the unit came from a 1991 500 the cell it has yeah, somewhere around 200,000 miles and the unit was original still original um, the um, the car ran fine Everything was working, all injectors were working, and the only thing, the only reason why I actually mailed it out is because, first of all, it's over 20 years old. Second of all, the car had slight miss um, at certain load conditions, and, you know, my cars are all pretty much done up right. So, all vacuum hoses, all maintenance items, uh, timing checked out, and, you know, all these things. I went through the whole car, and the only last thing was left, injectors I changed. The only last thing would be left is the um, uh, the fuel distributor, which is kind of makes sense because 20 years old. I mean, it's dirty, it's clogged up, so it has to be done. All right, now before mailing this thing out, I basically opened the unit. I split it in half. I didn't go in depth. I just split it just to see how dirty it was inside. I saw some dirt spots. Major concern was this diaphragm, which is the main diaphragm that sits in between the two, and the springs on top and springs on the bottom. So they counterbalance themselves basically you have this spring sitting here and then you have the metering unit spring uh, there's this piece that goes on top and then there's a metering little piece that sits on top of the metering jet so this diaphragm sits in between two springs <coughs> as you can see spring on the bottom spring on top so they're obviously preloaded so depending on the pressure in chambers top chamber or bottom chamber um, it moves up and down so it either closes this passage or it opens it and close uh, uh, or it opens it basically there is no passage there but the pressure goes under the diaphragm as well so basically diaphragm is extremely important because that is part of how it meters fuel if it's ruptured then fuel is gonna float from one chamber to another and obviously you're gonna have uh, equal pressure in both chambers and metering is not gonna happen so the diaphragm the one I removed had a split right here when I <laughs> when I received it back I found the split exactly same location and um, if you look at it I don't know if you can say that this diaphragm is only a couple of days old okay I mean based on the condition stretches dirt and split obviously that same one I had magically appeared on a new diaphragm it's just a whoopsie daisy I mean can't believe it and he's you know I confronted the guy he says oh yeah you know I cut it over here specifically for metering hole now if you look where it sits it sits right here like such now what was the reason of cutting it around this metering hole right here I have no clue it's supposed to be round and I guess you know German engineers are not stupid so they designed it the way that it's supposed to be designed. So it's supposed to be a hole, not a cut, in a diaphragm. So obviously that's not correct. So he tells me he split it just around the metering hole. Why? It makes no sense to me completely. I mean, logically thinking that doesn't make any sense. So that's number one thing. The diaphragm was not replaced. Now second thing is, I thought that the guy is going to clean the unit. So looking at this unit, this is one of the halves where the metering unit goes. Actually, well, it goes throughout. As you can see, some spots here. 
kind of like weird spots so obviously the unit was not cleaned I'm not saying to scrub it with Brillo or something because you can't this is very sensitive equipment here but I mean come on at least to clean it a little bit just somehow I mean you know with some carburetor cleaner and some even with this towel I mean it's no big deal you can clean it you can get this get rid of all these things I mean if you really want to go uh, super spotless then use like a finest grade sandpaper like super fine or polish even because this thing is nicely machined so you don't want to disturb the surface but obviously in this area it was not cleaned now the screens inside jets as you can see there are tiny little screens here if you look at this one for example you can see some pieces of dirt in there again not only around the perimeter see it's around there there's some dirt and around here is some dirt but inside the screen I mean you do not want to pull this out it's kind of in there with the o-ring and stuff like that so let it sit there this is where the uh, the hole for the injector goes through through this metering screen so you I mean it's just a filter really so all I did is the other ones were quite dirty as well like this one for example all I had to do is just take carburetor cleaner blow into it whatever blows in there comes out through these holes and inside this chamber from there you can clean it out I would advise against high pressure um, let's say um, compressed air or something like that I think it might rapture it so I wouldn't do that um, maybe at some distance to blow it out to dry it out but um, seriously if you rebuild throttle body I assume you would clean it internally like around here as you can see it's just, just like around there you see some accumulation of dirt um, looking at that I can say that the, the rest of the unit was never cleaned so I will have to thoroughly clean it when I get my new rebuild kit um, so on this side I hope you never touch the these bolts because these are where uh, the other the other part of the jets sit it's just basically this little piece it preloads the spring it's very important how it preloads it if it's off then the diaphragm is just gonna be pushed out more or less so the diaphragm sits here and then the other spring goes there okay so it moves up and down so it's supposed to be perfect so I hope he never touched it it doesn't seem like because I, d I don't think he would bother it if he didn't even bother cleaning it so I hope it was never touched the problem is is all these things are mixed up now um, that's not good because it was obviously designated to each and every chamber so I'm gonna have to put it in and see what happens now supposed to be a spring removed there I don't know if he did that I mean not a spring I'm sorry the o-ring but based on all surrounds it seems like it was never removed so it's kind of dirty so I don't know if that was the case now I'm still confronting the guy about that there's a little valve in there I don't know if you can catch it here we go there's a glimpse of that valve you see that valve in this hole as you can see it's sort of sideways it doesn't look right to me so I'm going to confirm with the other unit I, I have somebody with the same car I'm going to check with his unit see if it's sideways like such or it just got stuck um, in there and now it's sideways it does not meter correctly the main metering unit <clears throat> when this thing came there's an adjustment to it if you look at this unit this is where it all happens so there is an adjustment to this unit when you move it out it's spring loaded so it just extends now you can have this piece pushed in more or less so if you push it more you're gonna have these tiny little microscopic metering holes open more or less when you go on idle so now I don't think it was aligned properly because the car would idle too low um, at first it actually idled on only five cylinders the rest of the cylinders did not work at all but you can push it as you can see like very far okay see the gap here or you can just have it a little pushed in slightly like such so this has to be recorded when you assemble it back so unfortunately now because I opened this unit up without taking measurements because I thought he would do it right 
I do not have it. I do not have it set, so I'm gonna have to reset it myself while in the car. Uh, the screen here was not replaced, but I don't think you can replace it anyway because I doubt the guy has this kind of replacement screen, and anybody has this replacement screen. But good news for me is that the screen is not broken, so that should be fine. Metering holes. These tiny little holes in there, slots rather, right into these. They're about two millimeters, tiny. So in some of them I, I see dirt, so that obviously wasn't cleaned up properly. I'm going to clean it up, get all the dirt out, because this is extremely precise equipment. And that's how it basically meters fuel. It pushes on this plunger, and it opens the passage, more or less. Um, so this, you know, this has to be correct and perfect. And we go down to the worst thing ever that I could ever imagine being done to this unit. Now these are meterings. Um, these are basically like valves. They work like valves, the plates. Now, ingeniously, this person put crazy glue on these. I guess to make them stay there in place. If you look extremely closely here, this is one of the units. You can see the spring is actually glued to the to this plate so like in this area right there it's all around it is glued with crazy glue now the crazy glue if this if this crazy glue disintegrates slightly and this is gonna start traveling through this throttle uh, through this fuel distributor it's gonna be basically catastrophic it can clog up all the holes and you know how crystal it is it's like crystals so I don't know how it would be possible to wash it out from the unit altogether because crazy glue is crazy glue so he may I mean I don't know he just glued it but that's not professional if you put it in you're supposed to put it in clean so everything is spotless I just left three pieces here because it took me half a day already to scrub up that crazy glue from from other pieces as you can see I just cleaned them up and the springs a few springs I also cleaned up because I do not want no crazy glue inside my fuel distributor that is extremely it's like extre precisely machined so you see the springs are clean now but it does take a long time to not damage anything because I don't want to have any damages on it so no scratches as you can see I cleaned it nicely and I took off most of the glue I'm gonna still have to clean it with carb cleaner to get the glue out from all the ridges but comparing this unit this metering plate to say this one I mean it doesn't seem to be ever cleaned up what he claims that he did he said cleaned up well I mean I don't see it being clean I mean I don't know maybe I'm blind but this looks to be clean this does not look to be clean so and then crazy glue over here that's just great bonus so now I have to like the spring itself is de just deformed so now you see I have to kind of like Pull the springs backwards and get rid of this crazy glue as you can see these are crystals of crazy glue still stuck to the spring see like right right now there's one stuck to my to my finger so if this starts traveling and it will because it's gonna break off as you can see I just broke it off once the unit starts working pulsating up and down this is gonna break and all of that is gonna try start traveling through the unit I do not really want that to happen period so this is the other resemblance of the glue so let's just get it to focus now so the shiny part this is glue right here so you know that just takes long time of scrubbing I have this surgical knife Japanese made in Japan very sharp stuff so I use it I gently see here it's a piece of crazy glue I mean come on inside the fuel distributor really crazy glue I can't do that I mean <laughs> maybe I'm wrong but logically logic tells me that's just not good at all you cannot just it's just might as well put silicone in there and see what happens so so far this is what I find in this unit I haven't started cleaning it yet but it seems like it's going to be cleaned up pretty well. I'm mean, going to clean it up all right. Um, but um, this is my experience. I mean, rebuilt systems on eBay. 
like I said the guy name is Gene that's what he did to my unit now when I put this unit back in the car when I first got it it, it only oh yeah it, the inside this metering hole in one of them there was a piece of old o-ring stuck I do have pictures of that um, it's just well, it was just stuck in there so when he put it back together what you didn't see the piece stuck in there and then he tells me that all the ports were perfectly fine right on the money he said how is it possible where the hole was just halfway blocked and then it would have give you the perfect reading just impossible really so when I first got this unit back in the car after supposedly rebuild um, I couldn't start it it took me a long time to get it to start because I actually had to wedge the, 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 the airflow plate to get more air in the engine so it would start so it did start finally and then it was shaking so I looked around and I couldn't get this thing to run so it would die out on me so I messed around with the you know fuel to air ratio I got it to run but it ran on five cylinders versus eight so I did check it all out I bled the system I purged it out from air and everything like that and it would still run on only five cylinders out of eight when I took it apart first time this is the second time I'm taking it apart because I'm waiting for the new kit with new diaphragm and all the new o-rings so first time I opened it up real quick I just wanted to get it to run I clean it all inside whatever I could clean I moved these things you know from the membrane they were like basically stuck to the membrane one was glued with crazy glue to the membrane so I mean I don't know if I still have some glue left on it but it was literally glued here in this area this is crazy glue so basically one of the plates was glued to this membrane so how would it possibly work correctly another another metering plate this metering disc there was some crazy glue over the surface so basically this piece supposed to be exact exactly precise over machine surface so if there was some crazy glue there it would have been tilted so and that's exactly what I find one of them had too much glue and it was actually over the metering area because it has to be in the center perfectly correctly in the center so that's what happened and um, you know when I took it apart I got it to run it sits basically like this I actually got car to run on all eight cylinders so it did run but it still not does not run the same just terrible actually so I'm going to redo it because it's supposed to close these um, injector holes so if one is tilted how will it close it no way it will close it so you're gonna have pressure difference in the unit so totally unacceptable so you know that's what I see here very very negative experience to be honest with you very frustrating and um, you know I thought I rebuild things and I know how I do it but I would never leave my customers with this crap I mean come on it's just very upsetting because now I have to spend my time to fix it myself but long you live long you learn so I just want to tell you guys about this and I don't don't usually do this but this is really really upsetting to me so it's just it's glued man it's crazy so here so I'm really really upset I don't want nobody to really get into the same position as I was because you will be searching around chasing the problem but you will never find it because the problem is not um, in something else but it's an original unit that somebody messed up so you want to believe it you want to take this advice or not it's up to you it's just uh, my uh, view of this rebuild and I'm also once finished I'm gonna make a couple of more parts of unit being put back together <clears throat> and also when I put it back in the vehicle and start it and run it I'll make the video show you how actually this unit runs once once I fix it alright well um, be careful thanks for watching